Okay, we have some excitement here this afternoon. I honestly was skeptical if this was ever going to happen, but guess what? Um, it has. I want to show you what we've got in here. Our mama hen here, she's actually one of Blanche's babies from last year, Miss Turkey Roll's baby. She has been sitting on a clutch of eggs. We have three new hatchlings as of this afternoon. What we have done, now typically I will tell you, we like to do this as it's getting dark. It is easier, but we came up here to feed and the babies were scurrying around and all kinds of things were happening. So we made an executive decision to go ahead and to put hay into this water trough. It's a brand new water trough. Mama is in there now. She has three little babes and she has the rest of her eggs. Will they hatch? I don't know. But what we're doing is getting her set up with hay, water, and feed for her and the babes. We're actually going to be moving this over into the main part of the barn in a stall where Cochise can protect them because we have found some raccoon scat around the barn. Uh-huh. So we got to watch that. So what we're doing is we're moving her. I'm using baby gates on top to protect, you know, protect her from getting out or anything getting in. I do put them on and then I put something a little heavier on top just to kind of balance it. I'll show you. you work with what you got. But water troughs are great. Extra water troughs um, for this type of situation. They work great for turkey, turkey hens and um, your broody hens, your chicks, your chickens, whatever. So I just want to show you what's going on. Let's get them moved. You ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. Hold on, wait. Look behind you, baby. You So hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing great this afternoon. So are you in the age group that's preparing? Or are you just lost in translation? What's the deal? So I hope you're doing great on this very, very doom and gloom looking Sunday afternoon. We're actually about to have another big thunderstorm come through. So yesterday was a break from the rain. And I thought I was gonna get to work in my garden a little bit this evening, but I don't know now. But I have something that I wanna to talk to you about because there is a new article. I will link it down below. It's from Zero Hedge. And I, this just, honey, this just rings our bell. Okay, so it talks about basically how people are preparing more than ever, but it goes very specifically into age groups. It does go into the fact that basically we have seen a massive uptick in people preparing since the current um, ice cream licking, sniffing, whatever, uh, it, it took, uh, took a seat somewhere, basically. And so it talks about basic, you know, how everybody's preparing. Now, I absolutely believe this is true because we saw this happen uh, starting in 2008, all the way uh, through up to 2016. And a lot of people start, started kind of backing off. They felt, yeah, I'm just there. that's true. Uh, they sort of started backing off, in my opinion, a little bit. They felt a little bit more comfortable with the economy. They felt a little bit more at ease with situations. You know, let's just be honest. They felt like they had some type of leadership. And so that, that sort of, you know, put people back on their, you know, in, in, in a form of enjoying America again. Well, here we are again, back into some serious, just hyperbolic, crazy town, uh, you know, bread and circuses all day long, every day of the week. 
because you have to have a constant distraction. You have to have a constant crisis. You're in, living in crisis mode. You know why? Because, well, that puts you in a state of fear and people that are scared and or hungry get controlled much easier. I gotta show you this because I know somebody's gonna say something silly. They're gonna say, are you wearing a t-shirt that says you're woke? No, 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 look here. <laughs> I woke up like this. I've had this shirt, it's a Polish chicken. I've had this shirt, uh, gosh, four or five years. My son bought it and thought it was cute and brought it home to me one day. So just wanna let you know if you saw the word that, you know what that means. But listen, so here's what's so interesting. So in this article, and I'm gonna link it down below, it's on Zero Hedge, it just came, it just popped up this morning. It specifically goes into, it's so funny, it goes into the detail of basically saying the people that are preparing the hardest are between the ages of 40 years old and 65 years old. And what's so funny is I was showing James this. He said, boy, you've nailed that. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you have said for a long time that you have noticed that you are seeing individuals under the age of 40 aren't really doing that much. You know why? It's because they really, in a lot of ways, they, had, they didn't experience the life changes that we old people are seeing. Okay, they didn't have the, they weren't alive to experience, say, great grandparents like you and I did, uh, things of that nature. I will tell you right now, and this is nothing against my sister, I do have a sister, uh, and just, and just so you know, her hair is as red as fire. Yes, it is. But here's the deal um, she is significantly younger than me. And um, because of that, I had experiences with great and great, great grandparents that she never had. It's just, it's just the way that it went. You'll find that with any family situation. If you have five or 10 kids, you know, my papa was the youngest of seven children. And from the firstborn to him was almost 20 years. So his older brothers had much different life experiences than even he did. So that should be expected. But here's the thing. So you have basically Generation X and older are the ones that are pretty much carrying the torch. Now that doesn't mean there aren't folks. If you're 41 or 35 and you're prepping like crazy and you're awake, hallelujah, praise Jesus. Just understand that, well, you don't have to understand. You probably already know that you're a rare bird. You're a special bird. You know what I'm saying? See? So... The fact of the matter is, we'll have to boot scoot and boogie here in just a minute. The fact of the matter is, they're not preparing because they don't know the difference. It's like, you know, if people drink sand all of their life, they don't know what, what an honest, cool glass of water tastes like because they've been drinking the sand the whole time. So here's what I wanna to say to you because this is really a concern that I have and I may morph this into another video, which is please be talking. Let's walk back this way. <clears throat> please do not be afraid to be talking and teaching, okay? I am making videos on, uh, I'm gonna, I have been and I'm gonna continue to, I'm making smaller, quicker videos on things to buy for a pantry simple recipes to make in the kitchen, okay? You folks that are my age and older and my mama's out there, my, my grandmamas and my mama's out there that are home cooking queens, listen, I understand that you may do things a little bit more old school, but when I make a video or when you're teaching somebody, you have to break them in, okay? You have to break them in in order to get them started. You cannot overwhelm these younger generations. I'm not saying to teach, to treat them like delicate little snowflakes. No, I'm saying this is what good teachers do, okay? If you were to learn how to do something for the first time, you don't need to learn it on an advanced level. You learn the basics first. So this is what I'm saying. People in your life, children that are in your family, it doesn't necessarily just have to be your kid. It can be your kid's friends. It could be your neighbor's children. And they don't have to be just seven or eight years old. You know, I've got teenage, college-age boys, okay? 
they're learning to do still. They are still learning to do things, okay? But I'm not gonna go in here and teach how to make a five course meal if I want them to learn the basics of how to fry up hamburger and make spaghetti. You have to start small and grow it and build it. Don't overwhelm them, don't turn them off. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of people that said, I've lived my life and I'm preparing and I ain't worrying about nobody else. Well, I get that. But you know what? Maybe you're being called to be a teacher too. If you have been so blessed to see a full life like I have, like you have, okay? And you've been given an opportunity to be blessed in terms of your preparations, in terms of your skill sets. Please turn around and teach it when and how you can. These people have to be inspired. These younger generations need to be inspired, okay? You have to try. I think you would be really surprised by seeing how many young people really truly even if they seem ungrateful these days or they're bitter. And don't get me wrong, we've got a lot of issues, but a lot of them are looking for guidance. Okay, I'm not saying to give something up for them. I'm not saying to put yourself out, but to recognize from a different angle, maybe you have been blessed enough to share these teachings with them, okay? Just something to think about because I do believe the people 40 and up are the ones that are going to be holding the line because unfortunately a lot of the ones that are younger that that are our children they don't know the difference oh i'm starting to see a raindrop starting to see one this is much safer and a little bit cooler so do you know what i'm saying so this is the facts we know that we're in a tough time we know that things are going to get tougher we understand that more than likely our elderly and our elders and especially our younger generations, guys, they're depending on us. Whether we like it or not, whether we, you know, whether or not we actually had these experiences or not is really irrelevant. I can tell you right now that when I became, you know, a young married woman and started having kids, I relied heavily on asking a lot of questions to my grandparents because I wanted to make sure that I understood how to have a better pantry. Should I pay this off? It's, it's simple guidance is what I'm talking about, okay? And the best way to introduce preparedness and life skills is by literally hands-on experience with those of us that have actually done it have seen it with generations much older than even us and that we are willing to share it. So I'm gonna link that article down below. I do hope you read it and check it out. Um, like I said before, that doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that there's that somebody out there, even though it says between the ages of 40 and 65, which I think is accurate, doesn't mean that there's not somebody out there that's 30 or somebody that's 80, okay? It's just saying that when you talk about the overall demographic in terms of age group that's doing it the most, this is the age group that it falls into, which is no surprise, you know, you know, Generation X, we, you know, heck, I still drink out of a water hose every now and then. Whatever needs to happen is going to happen, right? We don't think about it. We just make it happen. So I hope you guys are doing well out there. We have a lot of videos coming up this week. We're going to have thunderstorms off and on. The farm is doing really, 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 really good. Tomatoes are coming in um, great. Um, I'll film that this week and show you all the things that are happening in hip hop on the farm. So I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Think about what I said, okay? Think about how we can make a difference with these kids. I say kids, I know, don't get mad at me. But the reality is, is who else is gonna teach them? Who else is gonna show them how to make biscuits? Who else is gonna show them how to chop wood, pay off bills, love the Lord? I mean, it's on us. We have to be willing to raise our kids and assist our young people because no one else is going to be able to do it. And if we want to save the future and if we want to save future generations, whether you like it or not, you may be called up to be involved. And when that conviction hits your heart, I hope you show up for the task. Like, subscribe, and share. We appreciate you. Hope you're doing so good. More videos coming your way. We'll see you then.